Hello everyone. In this video we're going to look at a quick question I got in the comments today and that is how to create a knob which goes from negative 180 to 180. So first let's start by creating a knob object and also creating two monitor objects. The first monitor object I'm going to rename to monitor 1 so that we have monitor 1 and monitor 2 here. And monitor 1 we're going to use to monitor the knob's x variable as we've done in other videos. So we'll change monitor 1's value to knob.x. Alright, so now as we rotate the knob we go from 0 to 1. But we said we wanted an endless fader, so let's change the knob to be an endless knob instead. Uh, endless instead of standard. Alright, so now the monitor object we see, that is the value of knob.x goes from 0 to 1 and beyond. It continues to increase as we go clockwise and then if we go counterclockwise it will go into the negative ranges. Okay, so our goal is to create a second variable which we'll assign to monitor 2 so we can monitor its value which scales, like we said at the beginning, from negative 180 to positive 180. So let's start by creating that variable inside of our knob object. We'll say x equals, click that button there, and we'll name the output variable just output, to keep it simple. Okay, and then we'll set the monitor2 object to monitor the knob.output variable. Alright, right now we're not seeing anything from monitor2 because the output variable of the knob is not being set or modified at any time, so let's change that as well. Click the knob object, click the script button, and then let's create a new script in order to modify our output variable. We'll call the script convert value because we want to convert the x value into the output value. All right, now we want to run the convert value script every time the knob.x variable changes. So we need to set this to on expression and then we can simply set the value to x because this script is inside of the knob object. Therefore, this script knows that the x, value, the x variable sorry, means the x variable which is inside of the knob object. Alright, so what is our script going to be? Well, let's take this one step at a time. First of all, let's think about what values we're getting and what values we want to get. We're getting values from negative infinity to positive infinity, and we want to get values from negative 180 to 180. In these types of situations, it's always easier to think of your output value at first as scaling from 0 to some maximum value. So from negative 180 to positive 180 we clearly have 360 distinct values. So let's let's make our initial goal to scale from 0 to 360 and we'll move from there. But before we think about any of that let's just let's just think about the fact that right now x is going to negative when we go too far counterclockwise and then moving to positive when we go clockwise. So we need, we need to convert that negative or positive value into being always a positive value. And we can do that in our script by setting the output variable to be the absolute value of the x variable. Now, if you don't remember from mathematics in either high school or college, absolute value just means whatever value you get, call it a positive value. If you get 3, call it positive 3. That's fine. If you get negative 5, call it positive 5. If you get negative 100, call it positive 100. Okay? So absolute value basically says strip out the negative sign. Whatever value or number you see, call it a positive value, even if that number is actually a negative value. So let's see what happens to our monitor2 object now that we've set that. Notice x, which is what monitor1 is showing, is currently positive. So of course monitor2 is also showing a positive value. We go up. Fine, monitor 2 continues to show a positive value. Let's go down. Let's make monitor 1, which is knob's x variable, be negative. Now what happens? We've gotten to negative 5.298. Monitor 2 strips out that negative symbol and just calls it positive 5.298. We can continue to go in the negative direction. Monitor 2 continues to convert the negative value of monitor 1 into a positive value no matter how low or how high we go. Alright, so that's our first step. We've gotten rid of the negative sign. That complication is eliminated. 
Step so number two is we want to make monitor two, that is our output variable, always be a value between zero and one. Currently, it's going between zero and infinity, right? As we go up, it continues to go up forever. So whenever you think about creating a value between zero and some number, you think about the modulus operator. Now, if you haven't dealt with a modulus operator in the past, it looks like this. It looks like a percent sign. I've got other videos that talk about it. But basically, it means looking at the remainder after you've taken the division of one number by another number. So let's say we take any value and we divide it by 1. Well, you're going to get that value, right? 10 divided by 1 is 10. 100 divided by 1 is 100. But what if you have 100.5? Well, you can divide 1 into 100.5 100 times evenly, but you've got that messy decimal point left over, right? So that 0.5 that's left over is called the remainder, and that's what the modulus operator gives you. So in this case, we always want to get numbers between 0 and 1. So if we go back all the way to actual values between 0 and 1, And we go to our script and we say output equals output modulus 1. So we're going to take whatever value we have as x. Well, really whatever value we've gotten from our first result of absolute value of x. But essentially that's kind of like x. And we're going to divide the number by 1 and figure out what is left over after we do that. So between 0 and 1, well, 0. 2 divided by 1, you can't divide 0 0.2 by 1 evenly, it's less than 1. So of course your remainder is going to be 0 0.201, just like the original. But after we go above 1, let's see what happens. Look at this, so now we have the number 1.438. 1.438 can be divided by 1 one time, obviously, we're talking about 1.438. What's left over after we count to 1? 0 0.438 is left over. So that's the value of monitor 2. That's the value of our output. That's what's left over after we divide the actual x value by the number 1, period. Let's keep scaling up. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the knob's x value currently equals 6.457, as monitor 1 displays here. But monitor 2 only shows 0 0.457, and that's because we're dividing 6.457 by 1. 1 goes into 6 6 times, fine, but after that's all said and done, what's left over? 0 0.457, because 0 0.457 is a value which is less than 1, therefore it can't divide evenly, so that's our remainder. Okay, if you need to look up something else on the internet about modulus operator or remainders, feel free to. Hopefully that description was clear. Uh, it can be confusing if you don't understand it, but once you understand it, it's not a difficult concept at all. All right, so we've overcome two obstacles so far. We've ensured that our output value is always positive, and we've ensured that our output value is always between 0 and positive 1. Now, what's the next puzzle we have to look at? Well, as long as we're dealing with positive numbers for x, as we see here, we don't have any problem. But what happens when we get to negative numbers? So scaling all the way down. All right, we're getting down to zero. Now notice that when we go clockwise between positive zero and positive one, our output is between zero and one, positive. But watch what happens when we get into the negative values. Look at this. Now we're increasing as we go counterclockwise. That's the opposite of what we want, right? Monitor 2, it looks like we should be approaching 0, but we're actually approaching the value of 1. And as we continue to go counterclockwise, that behavior continues, right? 0 counterclockwise increases to 1, rather than increasing from 0 to 1 clockwise. So in order to solve this, we need to just do a simple check in our script to see if the value of x is less than 1. And if it is, we want to flip the value of our output variable by just subtracting the value that we get from the number 1 itself. So we're going to change here if 
x is less than 0, right, because that's the only time that we want to actually change output in this case, we want to set output equal to 1 minus output. So now if we go back down to 0, we'll see that our output variable flips immediately to the value of 1 and then continues to decrease as we move counterclockwise, as we would expect. 1 down to 0, 0 up to 1, 0 up to 1, 0 up to 1. Okay, so that's now corrected. That's working as we wanted it to. No matter how negative or positive we go, counterclockwise will always be decreasing from the value of 1 at the 6 o'clock position down to the value of 0 at the 6 o'clock position as we move counterclockwise. All right, that was challenge number 3. Now for challenge number 4, we want to scale the value from, we said 0 to 360, right? We said don't worry about the negative values for now. Just think in terms of scaling your value from 0 up to the total number of values you want to choose from with this knob. So again, we'll go back to our script. After our if statement, we're going to put output equals output times 360, right? So whatever value we have from a 0 to 1, we want that instead to be a value from 0 to 360. So as we go clockwise, we go from 0 to 360. Counterclockwise, 360 down to 0. doesn't matter if our knob.x value is negative or positive. It always works in the same way, just like we want it to. All right, okay, enough spinning. Let's do our final step here, which is to shift our values to be, rather than from zero to 360, to be from negative 180 to positive 180. And you might already know how to do this, but just to write it down for completeness, uh, we'll say output equals output minus 180, All right? Because for the value of, uh, what we saw as 0 before, we wanted that to be negative 180. For the value of what we saw as 360 before, when it, we wanted that to be 180, positive. So in both cases, the difference between the value we were seeing and the value that we wanted was 180. So we just simply subtract 180 from the value we were seeing, and that then we get the result that we wanted. So now we, as we see here, if I move counterclockwise down to the 6 o'clock position on the knob, we see the value approaches negative 180. And then as we cross that in the counterclockwise direction, it changes to positive 180 and then starts to decrease. Same if we go in the positive direction. We go from negative 180 up to positive 180. And then we reset at the 6 o'clock position once again. So ultimately, if you're using this for some purpose, you would want to take the output variable and then use your MIDI or OSC settings here in the mapping uh, panel and configure your outputs as desired, and then you could send that value anywhere you wanted to, whether it was a hardware synthesizer or another piece of software. So that's how you accomplish this seemingly simple task in uh, a few steps, but hopefully it was laid out clearly enough to where you can understand that and uh, make good use of it. Thanks for watching.